This is a Christmas memory of my mother, Alice Beth Whiteley Ashby, and I will tell it to you the way she told it to me. The Christmas that I was six and my sister Helen was eight is a Christmas that will always be vivid in my memory. It was the Christmas that Helen and I wished for dolls. Oh, we had dolls of a sort. We'd made dolls out of the boys' worn out socks. And one Christmas, Mama made us some dolls out of some leftover calico with button eyes. But what we wanted, what we longed for, was a real doll from a store with a china face and golden ringlets, dimpled cheeks, and a cupid bow mouth. One of our friends had a doll like that, that she'd received the Christmas before. And sometimes if we did special favors for her, like carrying the milk pails or helping to clean out the chicken coop, she would reward us by letting us hold her doll for a few minutes. We understood about the finances. Money was tight. What we had was needed to buy the seed for spring planting. And all of us had shoes that were worn out and needed to be replaced or at least resold. But Papa was gone for a few days on business the week before Christmas, and when he came back, he had the oranges for the toes of the stockings and two doll-sized boxes. I had a hope down in my heart that those were dolls, and they were for us. And that night, under the covers, Helen whispered that she had the same hope. Christmas Eve took forever coming, but I knew that the dolls were there. And sometimes between chores, I would sneak into my parents' bedroom and open the closet and look up at the two boxes that were high on the shelf. Finally, Christmas Eve arrived with the aromas of pies and cookies that mama was baking, the smell of pine boughs as they surrounded a red candle on the table, the popped popcorn that we strung for the tree. And then it was time. We'd waited. We'd watched Papa's every move with anticipation. But finally, he said to Helen and me to come sit down by him. He sat in his big chair and we sat on the floor in front of him. And he produced those two doll boxes. And he began to speak. I was so excited. My hands were shaking. But the words Papa was saying were not the words that I'd anticipated. He wasn't saying, and here are your beautiful dolls for Christmas. What he was saying was, girls, these boxes have dolls in them and how I wish they could be yours. But you know, our neighbor's father died suddenly and with the deep sorrow in the family and no one to make a Christmas for them, I knew that you would wish for us to fill that emptiness. So you can take the dolls and give them to the girls. Mama will take some pies and cookies that she's made and the boys and I will chop some firewood for them. I couldn't believe what I'd heard. I felt my eyes brimming with tears and Helen and I both looked at the floor. I knew she was about ready to cry too. And then I looked up at Papa and I saw that there were tears in his eyes. And even at that young age, I realized that this was hard for him, almost as hard as it was for us. And I realized at that moment that he loved us. He loved us a lot. So I climbed into his lap and I buried my face in his shoulder and I sobbed. Well, that afternoon, we didn't say much, but we dressed in our warm clothes and we got ready for the journey. We made quite a procession. Papa and the boys in front carrying the firewood, Mama following with cookies and a pie, and Helen and I each carrying a doll box. I carried that box close to my heart because I knew that I was going to be giving it up soon. But as we walked along in the deep snow, I fit my small feet into the footprints that my parents had made. 
Well, even as young as I was, I somehow realized that what we were doing was something special, something good, and that in doing it, we had lifted our family from an ordinary place to a place of kindness and generosity and grace. As I have thought back on that Christmas all those years ago, I've realized what great love my parents had for me. And I've realized what a privilege it has been to follow in their footsteps all the days of my life.